Yeah. How, how much research did you do? I mean, did you play the video games before doing all this? Because there was a lot of references totally. in, in the movie. Yeah, we played all the games. The producers and writers are huge fans of the game. Uh, Tomas, who's one of the executive producers, could probably beat most people at a speed run of DR2. And uh, we had Xbox in the production office, so everyone who, like, all the crew that could come in could just play the game. And we had a big whiteboard so everyone could write down their favorite thing as they were playing, mostly from DR3 that they wanted to put in. And just plastered everything in the office with all the cool stuff from the game. And Capcom in Vancouver, where we shot the film, uh, their studio's there and the creators were involved as well. So we just tried to make it as fateful as we could. And we're fans of it, so that was easy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. How did your casting go back? How did people get attracted to your project? Yeah. We could ask him. He got attracted well, to it. <laughs> I got attracted to it. They, they said, hey, do you want to do this? I said, why are you kidding? <laughs> Expletive deleted. <laughs> uh, and I said, yeah. And I said, yeah, sure. I mean, I think a lot of people, um, like Dennis and Virginia Madsen, like, don't necessarily get to be in zombie apocalypse action films <laughs> and like you know get oh, the chance to you know have that kind of fun like virginia madsen with a broom shetty cutting zombies down like <laughs> or she's like my son's gonna love this this is gonna be awesome so i think a lot of people just excited by that and also being involved with legendary absolutely so dennis if you had the chance what weapon would you use to kill a zombie like would you, what would you put weapons together or would you... i would put weapons together but you know mine is you know my my style as I, i've always said that i style I'd kneecap them first, All right. you know, you know, with a gun and then double cap. But see, the problem is, then you got you need to have ammunition. I have to You're have gonna ammunition. run out. Yeah, but then, <laughs> then, then I, I would, you know, I, I'd probably go for the samurai sword. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's a good choice. stay sharp stay all sharp. the time. <laughs> so, as a director and an actor, cool. what um, benefits did you see releasing this on uh, a streaming? Uh, service rather than you know in theaters or on DVD. Yeah, what there, benefits did you guys see? From I think us? there were two main ones. The first one was because it's online, there were no real restrictions. There was no ratings board. There was no running time. There was no like bad words we couldn't say. Like it was like everyone just kept going. Well, it's dead rising, so you're gonna have to do that. So just do it. And then um, oh, and then the other thing is just that's where the fan base is, and it's free. So anyone who loves the game can just instantly go check it out. And that, that's right where everyone who loves the game is anyway. So you're on your Xbox, you love playing Dead Rising, and then there's the movie, you can just watch it right away. So it just kind of made sense that way. Which elements were the most exciting to bring to life? Um, I mean, I, you know, if you like playing the game, you know, like a lot of your games, it's that power fantasy of grabbing a badass weapon and running out into the street and then getting way over your head and everything falling apart and then just have to running for your life and that was a big inspiration to that sequence in the middle of the film which is a big one-er action scene which is basically the arc of every action scene in that game it's like <laughs> check out this badass weapon like i'm kicking ass and then it breaks in half you get you drop it you take out your backup one that's gone and then it's just like a mad scramble <laughs> and so bringing that to life was a big inspiration well, you know, for me, it's it's being able to restart. <laughs> because I am notoriously bad at these games, I love them. So, um, yeah, so I, it is like getting the weapon and going going at it, going full tilt, and then getting disoriented. And so, okay, oh, you know, you, you got to follow the little diamond around. So, oh, yeah, how do you get out of here? So, it's oh. like a bit of wish fulfillment. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You know, it's 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 one of those things. That, I mean. It's, it, I generally don't go for the games that's actually killing people, you know, uh, even though those games are fun and yeah, I didn't know that they're, you know, they're just a game. Zombies aren't people. But just zombies aren't people. <laughs> they're already dead. So, and, and, you know, and I like, you know, killing stuff that can kill you. So, uh, you know, so it's, it's a lot of fun. It's guilt-free. Well, I remember Vince Gilligan, he said, because someone asked Vince on Breaking Bad, did the network ever censor what you could do? And at one point they, they cut a drug dealer's throat in that, in that, and they censored how long they could show it. But he was so pissed because the night before he had watched on Walking Dead, they like decapitated a zombie, and it was the same network, same time. And he's like, "You can decapitate a zombie, but you can't cut a drug dealer's throat." And they're like, "Absolutely not. Zombies aren't people. It doesn't matter." <laughs> Is there anything from the game that you wanted to include that you didn't get to? I mean, there's tons of awesome combo weapons. Um, we could only do so many because we had to build them and do crazy things with them. And I think there's obviously still a lot more to be done. Um, I was even just thinking this morning how cool a paddle saw kind of jujitsu kind of sequence would be. <laughs>
So, so if Robert Eagle's in the game playing Frank West, uh, did you ever think about having Chuck Green in the game? Totally. There's actually a, a Chuck Green jacket cameo um, that some people spotted, <laughs> which was kind of our tip of the hat to that um, in the film. And then, um, and the, I mean, a lot of his weapons were kind of the double chainsaw type weapons, and we gave uh, Megan Ori two chainsaws, but there's definitely room to explore his character in the future. But um, really, you got, if you're going to pick one, it's got to be Frank West. So. That is true. He covered wars, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so did Rob Riggle. So it was perfect. That's true. <laughs> so what was going through your head when you were kind of casting this? Kind of like, oh, we're going to get Megan Ori, who plays normally the most sweetest, nicest, straight-laced characters. Yeah, I mean, she's done some harder ones, but it was definitely, I always say when you're casting, especially women characters, that it's always all the films I've done is always find the strong female because if you have a weak female like all the chicks are going to hate it and the guys are going to just kind of not notice and then <laughs> but if you have a really strong female all the chicks are going to love it and the guys are going to love it so it's kind of always a win-win and then just having the fun of having Jesse's character basically having to follow Megan around <laughs> which would, and like follow her through um, kind of her journey and, and someone who's been through an outbreak in the past was really and she really sold the kind of badassness and we always, we always called her crazy eyes. She always gives like this like hard stare that you can't back down from. So that's the secret to casting hard stares. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about casting some of Dennis here? I mean, well, the think? best thing with Dennis, I don't want to give too much away about the film, <laughs> but he comes with a lot of credibility. So people automatically want to trust him. When, you, when yeah. he shows up, everyone's like, oh, good. Here's, here's the trustworthy guy. He's going to come in. Everything's going to be okay. You find it and kind of hard to not trust him exactly. as that commanding general. Exactly. And so but that's what <laughs> we needed in that character was someone the audience would trust because as the film goes on you might not want to trust everything he has to say. It's <laughs> <laughs> for the good of all concerned. <laughs> but you know, if like do. someone like John Malkovich came out and was like <laughs> he'd be like, be like oh, I'm not trusting this guy. <laughs> There's been a lot of reboots and remakes of old films. Would you ever want to do another major league film? Would I want to? It depends on the script. You know, because all of us are getting up there in age. So what would we do? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I would play, but a coach it's... Maybe? It, yeah, a coach maybe. You know, But it has to be realistic. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I would love to do it. Going from the Leprechaun where it's more... A little more uh, on the serious side. Yeah. If, if you could say it. Say, totally. Yeah. <laughs> to, it was the most serious killer <laughs> leprechaun movie. <laughs> to doing like a, you know, totally having fun comedy horror movie. How was that transition? Was it like, uh, did you find it easy? Or? Hey guys, I'm really sorry. We have to switch now. Uh, it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you so much.